Hi, I'm back, and here I'm, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, Planck's equation and the energy of, um, of waves. So hot objects <laughs> and the quantiz quantization of energy. So heated solids, heated solids, so when you heat something, they emit radiation. Okay, and sometimes if you heat enough, it'll actually will uh, some of the radiation or heat that comes off will will come off in the form of light. And we'll talk more about quantization and quantum um, right and uh, more tomorrow. But I'll, I'll introduce it right now. Uh, so Max Planck was a scientist. He's that handsome gentleman below, and he talked about the quantum. And this is the smallest amount of energy that can be emitted or absorbed as electromagnetic radiation. Um, the light form of this is known as the photon, but we'll talk more about other forms of quantum um, uh, as well at some point. We talked about today in the in the sheets that I gave out in class that energy equals Planck's constant times nu. Planck's constant is this easy to remember number, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. You know, someone asked me how I came up with it, and I have no idea at this point. So at some point, I'll try and look it up and try and figure out how that actually happened. But the point of all this is that you can quantify energy, and you can quantify it in terms of quantum. And energy can only be released in whole number multiples of HV. So in other words, energy can only be a multiple of Planck's constant and, certain, and whatever frequencies uh, that are possible. So only that EM, EM spectrum range is what's possible. And it kind of begins to explain some of the weird phenomena, like why certain you know, fireworks, when you pack them with certain kinds of salt, give off certain, kinds of, certain colors of light. Or why like heating something, like a piece of steel, it always goes from you know, red to yellow to white hot and then backwards again. You never see any other strange colors like purple or anything come up. And tomorrow we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about why that happens. The photoelectric effect was something I kind of indirectly used today to explain the difference in energy of, of light waves with the laser pointers and the glow-in-the-dark paper, which everyone seemed to really enjoy. So don't play with lasers, though, at home. The photoelectric effect is basically the, the, this idea. When you have photons or radiant energy hitting a certain metal surface, and we didn't use metal in our, in our example. We used uh, glow-in-the-dark paper as like a as like an analogy. And the idea here is if this radiant energy has, a, has, a, has enough energy, light in the form of photons will be emitted. We, and basically the idea here is electrons are, are being emitted. In this case, they're lost by the surface of the metal. For our purposes, though, the electrons kind of went up and then fell back down to the glow-in-the-dark paper material. The photons represent the packet of energy that behaves like a particle. And we'll talk more about the particle effects or uh, properties of, of uh, light and EM later. The idea that these photons are quantumed, quantized. In other words, they're little packets of quantum. And the, 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 the frequency of the photon that comes off of the surface depends upon the, the energy that you put onto the surface. And the reason why we're going through this is that this is what Einstein won actually, uh, went over that won him the Nobel Prize. And this gave rise to early... This is kind of like the ancestor or concept to solar energy. So the idea is that energy, in this case, if it's solar energy, it's radiating from the sun, strikes a certain kind of metal surface, it emits electrons, which is absorbed by a positive terminal, which again will complete the circuit and create electricity. So this photoelectric effect has some practical properties. But you just need to know how it works as a general phenomenon. So with radiant energy, you get electrons. Now if I shine more light, on there, I'll get more electrons. Okay, but, and this is the thing I'll talk more about in class tomorrow. The idea here is if the radiant energy has more energy, then the electrons are emitted at a faster rate. So you get more energy from certain kinds of light. And that's kind of what we illustrated today with the purple light versus the other colors. And here's an example calculation using Planck's law. So let's say we have a laser that emits light with a frequency of 4.69 times 10 to the 14th uh, seconds to the minus 1. What is the energy of one photon of radiation from this laser? So we're talking about one particle of energy. So we would use our E equals HV. Remember, H is constant. And we have our frequency already, so we just have to plug them together. And when we multiply it together, this is how many joules one packet of energy coming from that laser has. 
But remember, lasers just isn't just one one quantum. It, there are many quantums associated with it. So if I have, if this is how much energy one packet of energy from that laser has, what happens if I have this many packets or photons? So what's the total energy? What we would do then is we'd multiply the photons times this energy per photon, and we would get the total amount of energy. And then if I ask this, and this probably I won't ask you, but I, I threw this on here just in case it comes up for, for you advanced folks. So for regular guys who are watching this, don't worry about this last one or the one before. If the laser emits this many joules, how many photons are present? Now we can again, if we go back to our 3.11 times 10 to the ne negative 19th, this is how, many, how much energy one photon has. So if I divide the total energy by the energy per photon, I get how many photons are present. Why does this matter? Well, if we're using lasers for like cutting or for surgery or things like that, you don't want to provide too much energy because you'd risk damaging tissue or hurting somebody or, you know, or, you know, bad things could happen basically. But focus more on the first type of equation. That's what we'll be focusing on mostly for regular um, honors. You'll have to know this and probably at least the next one and probably the last one as well. But again, we'll work more with some of these problems uh, throughout this week, okay? So don't get scared yet. And I'll see you guys next time.